So hey everybody, this is Greg Bragg. I'm the Director of Specialty Sales for Explorer Scientific. Uh, today I'm going to show you a little bit about the rack and pinion focuser on the 80 millimeter ED Apo Essential Series, the 102 ED Apo Essential Series, the 127 ED Apo Essential Series. Those are, those are all white tube scopes. And the 127 carbon fiber and the 152 carbon fiber. All of these take the rack and pinion focuser and I'm going to do a little demonstration of how that focuser works. First off, um, as you see in the picture, uh, this is the rack and pinion focuser. It is a 10 to 1. It has the ability to move very uh, large increments as well as micro increments. That control is called a 10 to 1 focuser and that uh, helps you uh, get to a precision focus uh, with the focuser. The second thing I want to show you are the two knobs on the top. These two knobs here uh, are the tension controls for the focuser. So uh, in, their, in their loose position, you can see they're loose now, in their loose position the focuser moves quite smoothly but if you put additional weight on the back of the focuser like a digital camera or a astrophotography camera that at a steep angle could uh, cause the focuser to slip. So these knobs here control the tension on the focuser. It won't stop the focuser, but it does tighten the, uh, the tube, the draw tube, so it won't slip when there's additional weight on the back end of the scope. The, uh, the next uh, controls I want to show you is the focus release. This allows the focuser to rotate around the tube. Uh, so if you're on a German equatorial mount and the, and the focuser ends up off to the side, then you can actually rotate the focuser around uh, with this knob here. Now there's additional screws that hold the focuser on. Those screws are here and here and under the bottom. Those use a, a hex head, um, I don't know if you can see that okay, a, a hex head uh, wrench and the three screws on the exterior of the OTA are designed to control the tension of the focuser. You don't want this screw here to be the only screw that holds the focuser on. Uh, that can cause some, some scratching and stuff on the anodizing of the focuser itself. Uh, in a second we'll show you the focuser separate and that little groove that goes uh, inside the, the OTA. Those little plastic headed screws hold the tension. So once this screw is loose, the focuser then should rotate smoothly around at any position 360 degrees on the OTA. Once you get it in the position you want to uh, use it in, just use this knob. And you don't have to over tighten it. If you're over tightening that knob, these, knob, these um, plastic headed screws are not uh, tight enough. You don't want to over tighten them, just snug them up so that it holds the focuser in place. Alright, so that, that's the primary uh, knobs you see on the top of the focuser. Uh, these knobs here are for the diagonal and they release the diagonal so that the diagonal will come out and allow you to put on uh, a digital camera or other optional accessories for uh, photography. So that's the only knobs here on the top. Now I do want to get to the bottom of the focuser and show you a couple of screws there. So I'm going to rotate the focuser all the way over on the bottom. And then you should be able to see several screws here. Uh, hex head as well as um, a thumb screw here. This thumb screw on the bottom is a locking screw. So you tighten this down once you get everything in focus. Get all your gear loaded up if you're doing astrophotography. And this uh, thumb screw here on the top locks the focuser in place. It will move, but it's very, very difficult for it to move uh, once this is tightened down. So if, you, if you're doing astrophotography, once you get everything fully set up on your object and you're focused uh, correctly, then just lock this knob down here and a, th a nice tight thumb screw there will keep the focuser from moving. There are uh, other hex head screws in here. These screws here are to remove this block that in, in, uh, contains the shaft that goes over the rack and pinion uh, gear. Those uh, are rarely uh, need to be adjusted or uh, uh, removed. 
those actually allow you to take this block off and do repairs on the shaft uh, in, in case it gets uh, gunked up or, or cruddy or gets uh, some sand or whatever in there on, on these gears. That is uh, rarely have to be removed. If you are uh, interested in doing some additional repairs on the focuser, uh, once you get uh, once you get some issues with the focuser, if it sounds gritty, uh, then there are some screw holes here. You can see that screw here for this knob, a screw hole here for this knob to be removed, and then a screw hole here on this on the micro focuser to allow it to be removed. Those uh, then allow the focuser knobs to come off and this block would then be removed and you would find the shaft of the uh, rack and pinion focuser inside this block. It would actually come out at that point. So those are the primary uh, adjustment screws on the focuser. Uh, the, the ones that you'll find that you'll use the most are these three control uh, screws for the focuser and the tension screws here and of course you'll use the knobs to do your focusing. Uh, that should help you you know maintain the focuser to its um, most efficient use and then if you if you have uh, any questions you can always call us at our uh, customer service department in uh, our offices in Springdale, Arkansas. Hope that was helpful. Thank you.